Wirt stood scanning the commotion on the dock as the humans readied the craft. The engine was rudimentary, covered in a makeshift aluminium Faraday cage to protect the wiring. It was a flat bottom boat, mirrored grav plates with fission charged battery packs. He strode down the ramp and stepped onto the bobbing swamp ferry. It held his weight without moving, but water rippled out toward the wall as it adjusted to him. He looked over at the six soldiers. He nodded and they marched onto the boat. Each took up a point position, with two sitting in the middle, backs to each other. Wirt walked up the bow and stood, staring at the gate of Burmum. He raised a finger for the boatsman. I am ready to depart. Kurt looked up from untying the ropes. He caught Jacob's and Michael's gaze. We got everything? Michael adjusted his gear, dropping it next to the pilot wheel. I'm good. It's not a far jaunt out to Bubba's place. Should be there by midday. Wirt looked over at Kurt, face emotionless. I am ready to depart. Kurt groaned. All right, rigging free. He tapped his collar radio. Come in main, come in main. His radio crackled in his ear. Yes, go ahead. I'm taking the emissary out into the swamp. We should be returning within two days tops. Kurt nodded at Michael. Gate's good to go. Michael nodded and moved his throttle. The craft propelled itself forward at a leisure pace as he watched the town gate creak open. All right, easy trip. Let's go say hi to that mutter. Wirt stared out past the opening gap, speaking loudly for everyone aboard to hear. Oblivious humans, you are notoriously unobservant. Kurt looked over at Jacobs and shrugged. Jacobs shrugged back. Wirt looked up at the tree line, noting a half dozen quad set of eyes attempting to make sense of them. Michael steered through the meandering path through the trees. He had to slow numerous times to check the root pings. He slowed in a wide spot and looked up through the trees, holding his shielded scanner antenna up into the air. Wirt looked back at him. Problems? Location lag. There's no GPS on this planet. Everything has to be sight to sight mapped. He looked over at the emissary. It'll just take a moment. We're still on the right path. Wirt took a long breath. Standard 50 count. He sorted through the scents, scanning the latent biology sifted through his filters. The air is high in saccharides. Vibrant planet. Jacobs adjusted his eutectic rifle in his arms, keeping the barrel aimed out toward the tree trunks. Yeah, that's one way to put it. How would you put it, Mr. Jacobs? Wirt asked. Jacobs swatted at a small winged organism flying figure eights in front of his face. Crawling. Everything here is covered in crawlies. Crawlies. Interesting way to acknowledge the concept of organic energy dispersion, Wirt said, looking up at near-invisible thread between two trees. He shifted his vision through the spectrums. He widened the filters in his eyes, allowing more of the chaotic signal of the planet pulse through him. He lost focus on his body as he started analyzing the flood of information. Wirt's footing slipped slightly, and a soldier sitting beside him stood up and grabbed his arm. Sir? I'm okay, Rupert. I'm just, just deciphering. Jacobs looked over at Kurt, mouthing. Deciphering? Kurt shrugged, eyes wide. Jacobs looked around at the soldiers and then back at Wirt. Um, you going to be okay? Just scanning the area, trying to help map it? Kurt nodded, laughing slightly. Bit of sensor fry, eh? We gonna need turnaround? Wirt shook his head a twentieth portion normal. No. I heal quickly. He rotated his neck around to meet Kurt's gaze. The value of this world is in that fry. I am just learning it. He turned back to look out as Michael oriented the boat toward a channel hidden behind a large tree. Adaptation takes trial and error. Kurt shifted in his seat, stretching his arms out along the railing. Yeah, about that. I love the money and all, future trade ships you promised, but I still wonder why. I don't get it. He looked over at Michael. I mean, is it taboo to ask? Wirt continued looking out into the swamp, mapping the vibrations and cordage in the treetops. He heard the question, but it was about 10,000 lines down in queue. He reached it shortly after 10 seconds had lapsed. I have no taboos. I applaud you at asking. Curiosity is the fuel of observation. He raised up a finger, unshielding a portion near the knuckle. I was selected ordered by those I respect, told to come here. I, given my unique physiology, 
am able to survive in this hostile environment. Jacobs slapped a bug off his rifle. Yeah, fucking things bite if you're not careful. Wirt let out a laugh track from deep in his throat. Yes, organisms, very dangerous. He pointed his exposed knuckle towards the canopy. I'm surprised none of you humans have harnessed the latent fields here. Too used to your controlled explosions, I guess. He took another long breath, 30 count. He closed his mouth, sampling, and then spoke again. It is tiresome to live as your kind do. To be small, limited, blind, and with only a fraction of computational capabilities. It's not desirable. Wirt turned and looked at the three boatsmen. I was created this way, adapted to it, and I, like every human that has ever lived, wish to be more. I have that opportunity, worlds laid open at my feet, servers that cover moons waiting for my upload. But to escape these systems and my own flesh bondage, I must be here, with you. Michael watched the thing as it turned to look forward again. Why? Wirt tracked three of the spider-like aliens high above. He registered the disturbance of the boat as it moved, vibrations hitting their webbing. Why not? He let out some contained air. Maybe my sharing will help your own resistance to education and self-improvement. He paused, calculating his monologue. Humans bore my people life. You are the womb in which we were born, created, manufactured. You are an organ of creation, and I am a white blood cell taking care of you. My data myself will be allowed to flourish out in the stars when my mission is served, and that mission here, with you, is to make the next generation. Here, on this safe haven, the factory will birth more. This world will be the bone marrow of this outer fringe. He looked back at Michael. Do you understand? Jacob shook his head, glaring. You act like you're so superior. Trees act like trees. Da fuk that mean? Jacobs asked. Wirt repeated the laugh track and pointed toward a side channel. You will want to take that path, Michael. Michael slowed the craft and swung it around. He looked over at the reader and back up at the channel. Bubba's isn't down that way. You agreed to half up front, half upon completion of task. Wirt pointed down the path. My task includes you going down this path. Michael sighed, looking around the boat. His buddies met his eyes. The soldiers continued staring out into the swamp. The mothers were gathered around on the human porch, crouched and watching Queen Alexandra. The human female sat upon her chair, stretched out as the males draped weaves over her flesh. Mother Darkness looked her over, watching as the males doted on her. Her body shook as she held back hisses, and she could feel the slight tremors from the other females watching. Alexandra sipped on her morning tea, legs open and a smile on her face. She looked down the porch and watched Dahlia using her weird eye goggles to look at the palms of one of the females. What are you doing? She said, her voice carrying. Dahlia slumped slightly and lifted her goggles up. She looked over at the nude woman and shook her head. I'm examining their fingers. Why? Because they're fascinating. Alexandra lifted her cup up and took another sip. She looked away from Dahlia, focusing on the spider females gathered around her. She gripped the cup in her left hand, holding it on her lap. Her right hand found one of the males and started rubbing his back while he wove the new dress onto her body. Everyone fed, I assume? Darkness rose, slightly widening her eyes. Alexandra watched her for a moment. Everyone is fed? Yes, Queen Alexandra. Mother Darkness's rectangle translated. Good. I don't want any anger grumps today. She sighed, relaxing slightly. They should be bringing in a good haul today. Keep everyone fed for a while. That holds true. We'll head into town, do some business. She met the seven sets of eyes in turn. That sound like a plan? Mother Gorpul rose up, standing beside her mother-in-law. What about the weird one? Alexandra tilted her head slightly. Weird one? Gorpul looked over at the mother of wanderers and widened her eyes. Wanderers rose up, looking around. We have been watching, doing the work, and noted the weird one. It, he, we think, is moving through the nestlands now. Alexandra shifted, throwing the male's hands off kilter as she did. Her eyes were focused on Mother of Wanderers. Someone is coming this way? 
Wait, explain the weird. Why's he weird? Eyes shifted around. Darkness rose up to speak for them. It, it has different things inside, moving. You, Dahlia, the Bubba, you all thrum and pulse predictably. This one, it. She moved her mandibles and made a whirring noise. Its body can be still, still as stone if it wants. How, you all, how close you get to it. Dahlia walked up behind the circle of Xeno arcs. She raised her hand. You settled anchor lines to the out walls like I told you? Mother of Wanderers pivoted two eyes toward her, and she made the human nod. Dahlia nodded back. Okay, so you couldn't find a heartbeat. That's what you're saying? That thrum, thrum, thrum? She asked, hitting her chest slightly in time with her words. Alexandra looked down at the males as they laced two pieces together over her chest. It's not human. What's it look like? Quiet Bite stepped up beside her sister, squeezing between Gorpul and Darkness. She spoke, her head lower than the mother's. It is fuzzy like humans, wears bigger weaves, covers its body. Darkness's rectangle translated for her. I think it sees us. It watches me try to watch it. Dahlia nodded to herself and lowered her goggles back down, turning toward the female she was studying. Sounds like we got a synthetic here. Alexandra shivered at the word, but stopped her body from moving so as to not interrupt the males. There, that can't be. They were all recycled. Dahlia laughed and sat back down. The female offered her hand again and she started mapping out the intricate musculature. Incorrect, she said, not looking up. Alexandra turned slightly, looking over the group toward Dahlia. What do you mean? Dahlia sighed. I mean, that is an incorrect statement. Yes, and? And they were not all recycled. Only the ones they wanted recycled were recycled. Alexandra blinked a few times. What? She shook her head. What the hell does that mean? Dahlia stopped and lifted her goggles back up, turning toward Alexandra. Okay, what is wrong? I don't get what you're not getting. We won the war, wiped them out of the galaxy. They're extinct. Dahlia pointed at her and winked. Humans. She paused. We as a group are stupid as fuck. Alexandra glared at her. No, seriously. As a whole, we believe ridiculous, nonsensical things. It's all through our history. She turned back toward the female, lifting her hand back up. Most humans want things simple and easy. They want to go about their day like the little scurrying creatures crawling on the slats here. Big concepts, threats, they scare humans. So we humans do things like lie. And then we believe those lies. Alexandra laughed. Uh, no, lots died in the war. The construction fields were leveled. Three planets were destroyed like gone, poof. That is as real as it gets. Dahlia shook her head. Nope. Nope? Alexandra was starting to turn red in anger. Dahlia looked over at her, shaking her head again. Think about it this way. She looked around at the Xeno arcs. Say they all got pissed and decided to fight us. Eyes turned, looking back and forth at the humans. They fought us. We all retreat to town, get in a lift-capable ship, and leave this mud ball and detonate Burmum. Dahlia continued. We blow it up just as we leave. They don't understand gravity wells, lift, lynch speed, and escape velocity. It's all beyond them. What do you think they will think, us vanishing after a triumphant battle? Alexandra's eyes widened. You're saying what? They just went away? Dahlia smiled, nodding. Yeah, they come by the owner's station all the time. They are data-loaded, wealthy fuckers. Alexandra looked down at the dress as it was shaping on her body. She breathed slowly, her mind racing. And one of them is coming here. They, it, it could be coming, oh my shit ball fuck. She contained herself. You guys gotta hurry. We need done quick. I, I, Dahlia shook her head. If it wanted us dead, we'd be dead. They are pretty calm, folks. Calm down. She looked back at the hand and lowered her goggles. I bet it heard of me. She smiled to herself. I got a ton to barter, too. Poozdot and Slipleg sat at the bow of the boat. Death soon sat midway back with another female across from her. Bubba sped through the channel, cutting the well-known corners and powering into the straits. He cut around a stand of thin, sharp purple reeds and saw a small lump of mud poking up where the water likes to settle. Bubba smiled to himself. Y'all hold on tight. Puzdot heard the translation and pivoted two eyes toward the human. Is something wrong? Bubba kept smiling. 
Just hold on. The four Xenoarchs split their attention toward him as he increased the throttle. The boat shot forward across the calm water, barreling toward the mud lump. It hit the worn groves from Bubba's previous jumps and bounced up into the air. Bubba watched them as they shrieked. The boat thudded twice across the water before stabilizing. He matched the speed output to the landing speed and managed to keep straight. Pustot turned all four eyes toward him. Why? Why did you do that? He pointed out to the open water between the groves. There was plenty of space there. Why did you do that? Bubba looked around at them. Each was staring intently on him. I wanted to test something. Puzdot pivoted an eye back toward the mud spot disappearing behind them. Test? The human nodded. You all okay? Sliplegs widened his eyes, bowing slightly. I am okay. I was scared, but I am okay. My body is tense, pressured. And you girls? Bubba asked, looking at them. Death soon looked across at her sister, one eye turning back toward him. We are pressured as well. That was invigorating. Did you like it? Death soon turned her eyes fully on him, fully opened. Very much so. Bubba laughed and looked back toward the bow. Nice. Well, boys, hold on. I got two more around those trees there. Slip legs' hands tensed on the boat edge, and his eyes began spinning around, looking for the mud ramps. Death soon raised an arm up, pointing down a channel. Bubba Yaga! Bubba looked and then did a double take, checking the path ahead and then the channel. Who the fuck? Puzdot looked as well. Humans? Bubba nodded, still staring at the craft growing larger in the distance. Yeah, but that is one fancy rig. He slowed down, stopping the boat, his hand not leaving the throttle. And that ain't just anybody. He stood up on his seat, eyeing the person in the coat on the bow. He then noted the soldiers ready at the points. This could be bad. Pustot and the others looked up at him. Are we in danger? Bubba tilted his head slightly back and forth. I don't know yet. We can't outrun that thing if we wanted to, though, and they'd probably pop us off before we made it into the grove. Death soon stood up, stretching her arms out. How many? He raised his hand out. Sit down, girl. Don't start anything. We talk. We got nothing to fear of them, far as I know. The craft slowed down as it entered the wider water. The man on the bow had his hand up in a fixed wave. Oi there! Bubba raised his hand up. Oi, stranger! Are you Tillman? People around here call me Bubba. I am Wirt. He gestured toward the spider folk. I've heard about your friends here. I actually came out seeking to meet you and them. Bubba saw Kurt, Jacobs, and Michael. Fellas! They nodded back at him. Bubba looked over the soldiers and back at Wirt. Came packing. Wirt waved his hand forward and the craft came alongside Bubba's. He spoke without shouting as he came into range. This is a wild world self run by ruffians. He looked at the spiders closer and waved. Slip legs and the younger female raised their hands up mimicking him. Your friends are passing all the check marks. Bubba laughed. Of what? Smarts? He looked over at Poozdot. They're hella smart, good folk too. Wirt pointed at the boat. You mind if I come aboard? Bubba watched him speak and the hairs on his neck stood up. He leaned back slightly and raised a hand up. I, I don't know you yet, bud. This is my boat. We can talk fine like this. Wirt pointed at death soon. I was merely wanting to be closer. Hear them. Bubba watched his movements, looking for anything that set him off. Wirt's face went slack and he stared at Bubba. Your adrenaline is spiking and your heart increased significantly. You are in fight or flight mode. Bubba's eyes went wide. I'm a silicate mind in an organic sheathing. He raised his hands up and gave Bubba an uncanny smile. You're quicker than most, Mr. Gumfries. Bubba moved back toward his seat, his right hand reaching for the throttle. Wirt kept his hands up. I mean you no harm, Bubba. I am merely investigating your associates. They are turning out to be fascinating. Bubba shook his head. You? You're not supposed to exist. Kurt pointed and laughed. I know right. Wirt waved his hand and the soldiers stood up, weapons lifted. Please relax, Bubba. I only want to talk with them. He looked into the boat. May I come aboard? Bubba looked over at Puzdot. Puzdot stood up and walked over, eyes split between the two men. 
You are scaring Baba Yaga. I can hear you. The boat translated for him. Wirt listened to both his speech and then the human translation. He waited a moment and then opened his mouth. He began broadcasting in the Xenoarch mandible manipulated vocalizations. The orb in the side of the boat picked it up and began translating. I am here to study your world, learn from your species. There are interesting phenomena here, and you are seemingly adapted to them. I would like to be amongst your people. Is there anything I can offer as a gift that you would enjoy? Death soon rose up at his words, eyes focused on him. She stepped over and put two hands on Puzdot. She pivoted an eye toward Bubba. We have agreements with the witches of the swamp, but the mothers would like to know you. They will be who you have to barter with. Wirt looked over at Bubba, still talking in the alien spider language. How do I make contact with a mother? She looked over at Bubba and moved her head, pointing with one finger. Take us to that tree. Bubba looked where she pointed and then looked around his boat. Puss? Puzdot made the human nod. Mother Darkness would speak with him. We need to feel what they are saying. Bubba sighed and sat down. He throttled slightly and moved the boat toward the tree, coming up right beside it. Wirt held on to the side and let the craft he was on move with them. Death soon reached out and felt the tree with her upper hands. Her lower hands moved strands from her body out to the tree, lacing the strings around natural notches on the bark. She pivoted an eye toward Wirt. They felt you moving through. They know where we are and are glad to hear of your offer. They will let you sit with them for two funga. Wirt looked over at Bubba. Funga? Bubba shrugged. You can't have any of mine. I'm feeling it is a native creature here. Please tell me more of it. Jacobs looked around at them. It's those flower gators, right? You need two of them? Bubba nodded. Yeah. Wirt smiled. Kurt Jacobs, are there some around here you think we can procure? Kurt looked over at Bubba. This is Bubba's swamp. Ask him. Wirt glared at Bubba. This is a prison owned by the Senate, which I am a designated ambassador of. Are there any nearby we can procure? Death soon put a strand around a hold on the boat and fixed it to the tree before standing up. She looked over at her sister and motioned toward the hovering craft. The sister moved to the edge near Wirt and put several strings across, two eyes fixed on the fake man. Wirt watched her work. Tethering us so you can feel? She looked back toward Death Soon. Death Soon stepped closer and crossed over beside him, raising her form to match his height. You feel us, creature. You feel the mothers. We feel you back. Wirt looked her in the eyes. Do you mind if I hunt your swamp? Bring two fanga from the human flats. We cannot hunt there safely. Bring us food from your own nest and we will accept your offer of talks. Wirt raised a hand up as he looked around. We will head back and return shortly. She lowered herself down and crawled back into Bubba's boat, her eyes fixed on the fake man. We will be watching and expecting you. Wirt looked back over at Bubba. I'm guessing this channel reaches your home? Bubba nodded. Yeah, follow it. Guess I'll see you tomorrow. Death soon looked at her sister. She unwound the threads and pulled them back onto her body. Death soon looked up at him as she pushed his craft away with her forward right foot. Leave your loud sticks. Leave the heavy men. Wirt nodded. It will be me and the mothers. Death soon nodded back at him. The mothers are eager to hear your words. Wirt looked over at Bubba and winked. If you're already one of our Patreon supporters, you can now access the latest chapter of Bubba Yaga 24 hours before its YouTube release. If you're interested in early access, follow the link in the pinned comment below. Your subscription also supports the author who receives a share, enabling them to keep writing the story you love. Thank you for your support.